Before he was regarded as one of the greatest and most influential artists to represent Memphis, before his life story was stolen by Hollywood in the movie Hustle and Flow. Before we get into it, make sure to stay until the end for a special surprise for our new subscribers and supporters that you don't want to miss out on. Born Derek Dwayne Hill, raised in the rough Dixie Homes area of North Memphis by his grandfather, just a young kid trying to make it out of poverty, living in the hood, crafting his rap skills since high school. It's now 1993 in Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee, a corner store that doubles as a liquor store and, most of all, a record store in the impoverished community. The owner is a local celeb named Barbara, who recently married an upcoming rapper, now young man, Derek Dwayne Hill, who is gaining a lot of local attention with the rap name Kingpin Skinny Pimp. For the sake of the video, we will call him Skinny, who is known locally for having a studio producing and recently released an underground collab tape with rapper 211 called Pimps and Robbers, which gave him extra notoriety with everyone waiting to see what he would do next. Surprisingly, he took a different turn towards someone else he saw who had the talent and appeal, his wife, Barbara. At the time, female rappers were starting to make a name for themselves like Queen Latifah, MC Light, and a lot of local female Memphis rappers too. Being ahead of his time, he's seen a vision of female rappers being more marketable in the industry, deciding to invest in starting her career. They began first by coming up with a rap name, Lady B, with Skinny already having his own recording studio, also being a talented beat maker himself. They decided to make a collab mixtape called Something for the Streets Part 1. The tape gained instant local success with people stopping by the store to get the new Hot Underground album. While they were both excited about their blossoming rap career, their relationship, unfortunately, took a hard fall. They opened a local club but were falling on hard times maintaining it, trying to keep up with the other failed investments mainly attempted by Skinny, who couldn't climb out of the debt created. To make things worse, add in Skinny being allegedly suspected of cheating, coming home late at all times of night. Lady B then felt it was best for them to break up, leaving Skinny in the rap career they started behind. This sent Skinny into a deep depression, feeling lost and blaming himself for the failed marriage with not knowing what to do next. Despite what he was going through, everyone in town still wanted a new Lady B record. With the streets fiending for music and Skinny having all these beats made that was supposed to go on their next albums, he came up with the master plan a way to still feed the streets new music as Lady B. Skinny already knew he was a talented writer. All he had to do was come up with some songs from a female's perspective. Only thing is, he didn't know any local female rappers to record his records or that was willing to do it impersonating Lady B. So he chose the only option left for a man to do, impersonate Lady B himself. Oh by God. simply recording the records, then speeding up the vocals to sound like a female. No one would notice, right? So he turned the beat on, Pressed record, got in front of the mic, and started rapping the lyrics. After realizing he could pull it off, he then recorded and produced a full album called Something for the Streets Part 2. We are going to assume the real Lady B gave consent to Skinny to use her likeness and agreed to sell the tapes out of her store, in which they instantly became a local hit again. Everyone was buying the tapes, bumping the new records all around Memphis. The ladies were also loving that they had a local female artist that was putting on for the city just as much as the men. 
Although the vocals sometimes sounded slightly like the chipmunks, nobody questioned the new sped up voice Lady B now had. To help the matter, with Skinny able to produce the albums allowed everyone to realize how good of a producer he was, leading to him gaining even more notoriety, making more connections in the industry. With the success of part one and part two, Skinny knew he had to keep the people's attention, so he decided to start on the next album. Also, to take it up another notch on the lyrics. He went back into the studio, turned on the new beat, pressed record, got in front of the mic, and made another hit. Eventually completing a full album that had a play on the words from the recent Tupac's album that was released, Strictly For My Nick, called Strictly For That Nick which had instant local success as well. This time though, people were starting to wonder why Lady B doesn't want to perform her own songs. On top of rumors about the vocals sounding so sped up, some people started asking, is it really the original Lady B? People started comparing the original vocals from part one and noticed a major difference in the vocals pitched compared to the next two tapes released. First thinking, if this is someone else and not Lady B, who is it? Why even have to speed up the vocals at all? For the most curious that were suspecting the vocals had some sped up effect, they chose to try to take out the chipmunk effect. They slowed the songs down. Immediately surprised, not only is it not Lady B, it's not even a woman. So who is it? Then realizing it's Skinny Pimp. Bruh. Word quickly started to spread around town, with people now approaching Skinny, accusing him of impersonating Lady B. He quickly denied and abandoned the undercover persona, stopping the sale of all previous Lady B tapes, with Lady B to never release another album again. Eventually, both finalizing their divorce, Skinny went on to have a successful career becoming one of the pioneers for hip hop to come out of Memphis, influencing the greats like 3 Six Mafia's DJ Paul, Juicy J, just to name a few. His first solo album came out in 1996 titled King of the Players Ball, which is considered a Memphis classic. And I'll end it with this. While we can all laugh, some will roast Skinny, but I'll ask you, is there a difference between what goes on today? Take Lil Yachty writing the City Girls hit songs like Act Up, or Partisan Fontaine writing Cardi B's top hit songs like Borak Yellow. Now they didn't release the songs with their own vocals, but I'll let you decide if this is similar to what Skinny did. One thing for sure, male writers have always written for women. Most of our favorite women R&B hits were written by Babyface, R. Kelly, and The Dream, just to name several. Honestly, I would like to see rappers, especially females, reach out to Skinny for his writing skills and even production talents, which I think is highly underrated. I'm sure he has more hits to give, already proving he can pull it off if needed. Now, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, for those that who stayed to the end, as a thank you, I have a free Tupac digital download for all of you. Just follow the link in the description and you're free to download it. I won't keep the link open forever, so get it while you can. It's a gift for me to you for the support from everyone subscribing and commenting on the videos. For any content creators, feel free to use it in your videos for free if you would like as well. I truly appreciate everyone. I will be releasing more digital downloads in the future, so stay on the lookout. As always, make sure to like and subscribe for more.